Hi, welcome to PJ and the Beard. This is our 19 conversation series. This is episode number 28. And we say every day that we have a guest that we've been able to get some incredible guests to come on the show and hang out with us. And today is no different, like always. So today we have the king of the cigar box guitar. I love that. <laughs> Mr. Chase Feel. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. You know how I got the name, the king of the cigar box guitar? It's a great place to start. Oh, now I hope you guys know this history because this is central PA history. All right. Okay. Number one. I created the, the name myself and the reason, the inspiration for it. First of all, who would want to be the king of such a stupid instrument or a broken <laughs> instrument anyway, you know, <laughs> and this was before anything took off, but my inspiration for it was a country band from York, Pennsylvania called Rebel O'Leary and the Texas Rebelettes. <laughs> Do you guys have any inkling? No. <laughs> no, was, I, feel, I feel like I should. Oh, this is in the 1980s. This guy decided he wanted to be a country singer. So he bought all of his children instruments. They were like teens at the time. And he got them lessons. But before they really learned how to play the lessons, he started booking gigs and had a van painted up that said Rebel O'Leary and the Texas Rebelettes. And he would do shows anywhere, free shows. One person told me that he thought the band was tuning up one day, and here they were halfway into their set. <laughs> <laughs> if if you look on YouTube for Rebel O'Leary or James Rebel O'Leary, it is. I gotta grab a pen. It's amazing. That, that sounds like gold. And he called himself the king of country music. Rebel O'Leary. Rebel O'Leary and the Texas Rebelettes. Yeah, James Rebel O'Leary. So that's how I got king of the cigar box guitar because i figured if rebel o'leary could be the king of country music i could be the king of cigar box guitar. <laughs> now, i'm gonna say it, it was a, it was a good name because in the from the time that you've started getting into cigar box guitars until now you've really been instrumental in building a movement that's kind of nationwide yeah this is my oh, thing this instrument. you know it's gonna be on my gravestone um, this is my life's work, basically. Awesome. So uh, let's see. So just a quick shout out. There's some people joining. It looks like there's 22 people watching already, which is awesome. Uh, Brian, Land Brian Landreth, who is a friend of the show, just joined in. Uh, Za from Brazil. So we are reaching a, maybe a new audience for you because we got uh, one of our Brazilian friends that's a, fan, uh, a friend of the show. So... We've been doing a couple things every day. We do a clip of the day and we do a pedal of the day. And I thought today we'd start with the clip of the day because maybe if you're not really familiar with what a cigar box is and what it sounds like, uh -oh. that'd be a good place to start. So we're going to play a little clip here of Shane playing the cigar box guitar. Uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> what you picked. All right, here we go. Uh -huh. Oh, wait. All right, so I'm gonna put the link to that video down in the chat just in case. Ah, uh, Mother Leads. That's one of that's a fan favorite song there. Um, the cigar box guitar I'm playing there was uh, built for me. I did not make that one. And here's a cool thing: whenever I go in concert, uh, you know, yes, I build my own cigar box guitars, but the ones I play in concert, half of them I made, and the other half my friends made. Um, <laughs> And so the one I was playing there was made by Pat Cook from Arizona. And he gave that to me over 10 years ago. Um, it has a Dobro cone hidden inside the box, which gives it a very snappy tone. Um, I use that one a lot for when I do Indian ragas and Mother Leads is great for that. Um, it has this crazy three string tuning of EEB. There's a low E, 
the second E is an octave above, and then a high B. So it gives me like almost the complete fretboard of a six string, um, just kind of skipping around, and it just works perfectly for certain songs. Very cool. Um, wow, well, things blowing up in the chat. So yeah, this is nice. <laughs> Paul Ewing, uh, we've seen here before. Good to see you again, man. Guitar Hack, who has a, uh, his own channel uh, from Canada. Great guy. He's in Douglas Homer uh, from Vancouver via Harrisburg. He has two of your guitars. No, oh, nice. Uh, and uh, let's see. Chain Spill, uh, another fan. Uh, says you're a real inspiration in the Cigar Box community. So some people chiming in. Good to see everybody. Thanks for stopping. Thanks for joining in, everyone. Right. And I guess they can answer, ask some questions too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you have questions, put them in the chat. We can, if you're watching on YouTube, we can definitely see them. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, I think depending on where you're watching on Facebook, we can see them. Um, but ask the questions, and we'll get okay. to the room. Uh, we do a pedal of the day, so we're getting we're getting our things out of the way that we like to do. And pedal then of the day is going to be you. Nice questions. <laughs> so pedal of the day. Yes, we're going to can the pedal, and we're going to switch it to the book. Oh, thank you. So right here, pedal of the day, book of the day. Hey. Making poor man's I got guitar. one, too. <laughs> yeah. The question is, why don't you, if you're watching, why don't you have one right here? And so, like, you can get lucky. Even got it. Now, I don't think he knew he was writing that to me. Oh, you got one of the autographed ones. Nice. Build Your Own Legend by Shane Spill right here. So why don't you tell them a little bit about the book, man? Okay. Um Making Poor Man's Guitars, uh, it, it shows you how to build cigar box guitars the way I build them. Uh, everything from how to build an electric wash tub bass, uh, tin can microphones, all these folk instruments. But it's not just one of those dry woodworking books. Um, I packed it with blues history because that's the reason I play cigar box guitar. Because back in the day, it was 1993, I wanted to play a blues that was deeper than like the Delta blues. And I came across these stories of these guys that were so poor, they had to make their own guitars out of cigar boxes. And I'm like, that's the instrument I want. So all these years later, I've been collecting that hi history. And I ended up putting it in the book in between and in the middle of all these different um chapters of the book uh let me see you'll get like my interview with new orleans blues legend little freddie king i got to inter i got to interview him and he told me his whole story of when he was six years old building his own cigar box guitar there's stuff like that in there stuff about Jimi hendrix robert johnson all of them and the instruments they started on so you're getting more than just how to build an instrument, you're actually getting the mojo from it. And so we were talking a little bit before this thing started, and it doesn't really stop there because I, I think from what you told me, there was maybe, you know, your publisher wanted to make sure that people knew how to build them, but yeah. you wanted to have some more insight into that, like more insight into the history Yeah, that you put in the book. So how are you getting that out? Well, um, you know, there were so many things that my publisher, you know, I couldn't, to be honest, making poor man's guitars, um, that book was two books. I, they told me that they needed 180 pages. I sent them 360 pages and I, cause I'd never written a book before. And I said, okay, just pick the stuff you want from there and then let's have another book. Well, they just put it all together into one book and a few things got lost. So lately I've started my own magazine, a uh, poor man's guide. It goes along with the making poor man's guitars. And this magazine is available at poor man's guitar.com. And I still show you how to build stuff. Uh, in this one, I show you how to build. We say's guitars is issue number two. Now we say is, um, or was, the African oil can guitars that went viral. I mean, I got so close to him that after he passed away, 
I actually got his guitar tattooed on my arm. And then soon after, one of his guitars was actually sent to me. And so I took this actual guitar, all the measurements, all the information, and even pictures of we say building this. And that's in issue number two. Uh, each of these issues, they're five bucks, and it's a downloadable PDF. Um, I'm still trying to get print copies for, you know, just regular subscriptions. I do have some rare print copies available over on my other side, Stubby Slide. If somebody orders like a slide or a shirt, um, I'll stuff one of these in there. But Poor Man's Guide is kind of like where I wanted making Poor Man's Guitars to go. There's Shoot. more history, more weird instruments, more forgotten instruments, and forgotten music legends as well. Um, some of these just strange, weird vaudeville performers that nobody talks about anymore. I dig up that history as well. You want to play? Should we play a little clip of We See? You got something of We Say? Yeah, I mean, if you got him on your arm and have his guitar sitting there, I think, I mean. Yeah, let's show the like this I is feel like we should play a little clip. We Say Freeman. Uh, he was from uh, Liberia. All right, here we go. <laughs> There is cream of every night for you. There is food. If there is night, if there is you need. Ah, my brother. Yeah, that, that cool. doesn't get that doesn't get any more authentic and pure than that. That's no, cool. it doesn't. It doesn't. And I can't believe that I was able to get in contact with him. He passed away uh, a couple years ago. He was he was legally blind and was walking along the streets in Mon Monrovia, Liberia, and a reckless driver just plowed into him. Uh, mm -hmm. So me and the Cigar Box guitar fans um, did a Kickstarter and raised enough money for a good proper funeral, um, some money to we say's mother and and uh, to the ministry that helps him that was helping him out too. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, there he was completely authentic. And when I it, I first saw that video, like everyone else, around 2014. And here's a guy playing a three-string guitar, and that's what I play. That's one of my main instruments is a three-string homemade guitar. And there he is playing this. Now, I don't even know if this is in tune, but there we go. Now, he would move his frets <laughs> and have to adjust frets every time to get it in tune. Now, I haven't done that, so the intonation is off. <laughs> but and then you you would have to tune it with uh, these nails that are right back here. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my gosh. But yeah, we show you how to build it in uh, issue number two of making poor or of poor man's guide. And there is there is a website. I mean, we can bring that. We can just pop that up on the screen just real quick here. Um, poor man's guitars. So if you go. To poor man's guitars, poor man's guitar .com. There's yep. a website that explains all that and has a whole bunch of stuff. And this is this is really where Shane, you're building your community. Yes. I would guess. So yeah, it's my hopes to eventually turn poor man's guitar .com into a full fledged network. Um, I've been doing videos for years. I've been doing articles for years. It's time because Hollywood isn't putting out anything good, in my opinion. As far as the gear that I go after, I'm looking for the gear of the forgotten person. Hmm. And, uh, you know, so eventually, and I'm actually looking into grants and different things in order to turn poor man's guitar into a proper network that it needs to be. It's really cool. It's great. I'm looking over at the chat and guys, I see a lot of names. Um, that we recognize Lawrence Petros from Lawrence Petros pedals is in the house. Hey. Uh, uh, I bet they, they would sound great through that. Maybe we'll talk, we'll talk about that a little later. 
Um, you know, Ben Tom, Terry Himes, some people that we're, we're used to seeing, Bill Nolan. Um, he said he has his book with the autograph. If I'm missing anybody, it's not because we don't love you. It's just because we're trying to – I, I want to focus on and, and let Shane get his chance to talk about this stuff. And it, it's cracking me up, Shane, because some of these guys that are in the chat, we see other places. We're all gear hounds, right? Oh, we we love great. when people hold up the – you know, the beautiful Les Paul you know, or the, <laughs> the beautiful PRS or whatever. And then you hold it up. But there's something really special about these guitars. So let's let's show them. All Are right. Are we too early for that? No, no. we're going to just – this is show and tell. I mean, <laughs> so everybody stick around. I got – I brought everything and just piled it around me. Um, this is one of the ones I got recently. Now I I collect old cigar box guitars and folk instruments. Um, I you know eBay is one of my biggest places, and I've got all these different search terms that I go um, and I use. And the reason I collect them is I have a museum uh, out near Pittsburgh, um, and it's closed right now because of Corona. But out near Pittsburgh is Spiel's Tavern in the small town of New Alexandria, Pennsylvania. And it's my dad's bar. Um, back in 2007, he took the bar over from my uncle because my dad's a retired school teacher and my uncle couldn't take care of the bar anymore. And my dad said, well, I'm retired. Let me do this. But he called me up. He goes, I don't know what to do. There's nobody here on a Saturday night. And I said, well, I've got my massive cigar box guitar collection and I have an extra PA system because I'm a gear freak, <laughs> you know, and you got to have an extra PA system. So I took it all out to his bar and we turned it into a blues club. Now it is known as like the second best blues club in the Pittsburgh area next to moon dogs, which is huge out there. Um, but on the walls is the cigar box guitar museum. And that's where I've been putting all these so that the public can see them. Now these instruments are few and far between. Whereas you guys will maybe collect the Paul Reed Smiths or or the certain Strat or whatever. I'm trying to collect these, and it's my goal to continue to show people so they learn the history of the poor that made them, or uh, want to try to build their own, or just find a deeper music. So this one I just got uh, two weeks ago. And it's just this little trapezoid guitar has a neat little elephant inlay right there. And this came from down in Maryland. There is wood frets, toothpick, toothpick frets on this. And it does need a little repair. You see how they built the neck. And I can just, just gently move that so you see. And it was a simple little construction, but... It does work. Now the strings are high. So here's one. Uh, let me see. What else do I have? The old ones I do have right here on my wall. Another is, this is a cigar box fiddle. Nice. Absolutely beautiful. Now this one, instead of putting it on the wall, the walls of the museum, I had to get greedy because it's just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, it's got dust on it. <laughs> and my cat getting near it. But just a little cigar box fiddle. And I'd like to get this to a luthier and have them make it playable again. There's certain guitars uh, that I have that I do want to get them playable. Um, and then... I've talked to people like Reverend Peyton and said, like, if I got some of these historic ones, you know, just enough to get them played, if I sent it to you, would you record it? Mm -hmm. And just to have legends play these legendary instruments. And it's not just about me doing it. It's about sharing and getting other people. I talked to Dom Flemons last year and showed him one of mine. And he goes, yeah, let me know. If you ever do that, I definitely want to be a part of it. Cool. Um, I've also been into strange instruments that time has forgotten. This is the Marksalin. This used to be sold door to door 
uh, from the 1920s to the 1940s. And it was for people who didn't know how to read music. There are numbers on here. And it was supposed to sound like a Hawaiian guitar. There is a slide that is on the string that stays there. And you're supposed to have a book with the numbers and then just... Strange. And now the I have the string very limp right now, you know, just to protect it. But I've been collecting these type of instruments, too. Again, the stuff that time has forgotten. Um, here's a cool piece. Great. This is from a busker in New Orleans. And this busker was pre-Katrina. And I still have yet to find out who he is. <sighs> yeah. All you guys with your double neck, Les Pauls, <laughs> and, uh, or, you know, the Jimmy Page ones, y'all can't compare to this. This, some unknown busker from New Orleans made this. He made two, at least, that I know because I own the other one as well. <laughs> and uh, it's in the museum in Pittsburgh. Um, what, is it, what does it say on the body? Uh, throw out something, throw out on the body of it on the top. Uh, did something fall out? No, no, what's it say on the top of the guitar? Oh, it's the, uh, Factory Throwouts. That yeah, was the name of the cigar box. This used to hold 100 cigars. <laughs> and so he put two Stella necks on there. And he has it set one for slide and one for fretting. And so the slide... <laughs> And then the other one is set for fretting. Now, again, the strings are a little limp and not in tune um, because it's not like I'm playing these out. I'm trying to keep these in great condition. Um, this was sold to me by a preacher in Kansas. And he used this. He actually bought this in New Orleans at a flea market, like, I, I think two decades ago. And he used this in his church service for a while. The weird thing is the busker that made this, and it's on both of the guitars that I have by him. It's filled with obituaries, decoupaged on the back, <laughs> some French writing, <laughs> photos, and on the other one, it was obituaries with pictures of girls in bikinis beside it. So it's like sex and death. <laughs> this one, since the preacher had it, right. he put this piece of duct tape over it, and I'm leaving the duct tape as part of its story, because if you take it off, and I'll put it back on when I'm done, <laughs> it's going very gently. The builder named this thing the devil. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe you could get Robert Randolph or one of the Slide Brothers to play that and kind See? of chase the <laughs> demons out. <laughs> you can't. I mean, this is incredible. Out. And I mean, this guy, whoever made it, has like metal dowel rods going in the middle just to keep it from collapsing on itself. This is just another amazing piece of my collection. Um, this one was in the book. And so if you have making poor man's guitars, you see this. And this does not look like a folk instrument. This, the guy that was building it wanted a copy of a 59 Les Paul Jr. or something. Uh, he was saying this guitar was built illegally inside a Pennsylvania prison. Hmm. Yes, I got to meet the guy. He is from Central PA. He's out of prison now. Sold this after arthritis got to his hands. Um, and he just really couldn't play it anymore, and he needed the money. And a friend of mine, Jerry Duncan of Guitars on George in York, Pennsylvania, uh, he called me up to tell me about this. And uh, I went down. I bought it immediately. And then myself and Mike Argento from the York Daily Record newspaper we tracked this guy down and sat down and interviewed him. Mm. And he told us how they built this in a prison. The neck was salvaged from a broken guitar that somebody had. But they were not allowed to build anything 
in the wood shop for themselves. The wood shop was there to, to fix tables and chairs or whatever the prison needed. Well, he wanted a, a Les Paul type of guitar. And so they used Pennsylvania walnut and a few other things. And behind the guards' backs, sculpted the body. Amazing. You know. Yeah. That's, that's, a, a, that's, that's an incredible top for... Isn't it? Despite where it came from, that's an incredible top. There is... A, if you take out the control panel, and I show this in the book, the wiring, notice how all the knobs are real close together? That was because they were smuggling wiring in. They couldn't use a lot of it, so he had to put all the controls very close. Um, and then, uh, let me see. He put Lady here on the cover, and that was his guitar. Uh, now, they weren't allowed to have guitars. You know, if you bought one, it would go in through Inkeep, and uh, they would make sure everything was cool, and then the prisoner could have it. But he wanted to build his own. So they snuck and they did this. And here he worked at the front desk at the prison. So he faked all the paperwork to make this look like it came from outside the prison. <laughs> and they would play these through hacked radios that they had in their, in their cells. They knew how to hack their radios to turn them into guitar amps. So The, ori the original Bluetooth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this is just... I. I've always wanted a guitar made in prison. I saw one many years ago on a uh, documentary and it was like, that would be so cool to have something. And quite honestly, I have the Stradivarius of prison guitars. Yes. Okay. What year was this made in a Pennsylvania prison? Um, this was Huntington prison, also known as the wall. And uh, I have it in my book. I can't remember the year. I think it was um, how da 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 da. So what are you doing? Um, we got Sean. You could see Sean's question there. Brody's chimed in. While you're looking that up, sorry, Mike Roblox has jumped in here. Welcome everybody. It's fascinating hey, hey. stuff this afternoon. Where is it? Can't even tell. My own book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was late '80s, I think, is when this was built. Here it is. Um. Yeah, no, this was uh it was twenty five years ago that this was built. So it looks like he should have done some more of that when he got out of prison. No kidding. Well, he didn't do as much of the work as his other friends did too. And his other friends and they knew where to stash the body. <laughs> they knew where to stash the body. <laughs> if they knew where to stash the body, they they wouldn't be in there. <laughs> you know, but uh, to hide the they got away with it the second time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But much smaller. Do you know how much this is worth? Can't even imagine. Give me an idea. Give me. I would need guesses. How much is this worth? What kind of? Well, for, before before we'll we'll let the chat guess. Guess chat yeah. guess on the value of this guitar. Yeah. Why don't you do that? All right, so, I'll I give you. I'll do the band white. I'll do the airplane. You know. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Are they How single much? coil pickups? What's that? Are they single coil pickups? They're single coil. It was supposed to be humbucker. But he could only get single coils brought in. And so what he did was there's black construction paper <laughs> on either side to just cover up where okay. the space is. So how much would you think this is worth? Yeah, we'll let the chat virtually embarrass themselves instead of us memorializing it on video. Go ahead. Tell us what it's worth, Johnny. <laughs> oh, somebody wrote it. Oh, somebody blew it. He knew already. Uh... <laughs> it's worth 20 packs of cigarettes. That's yeah. how much this was worth at its peak so it's like 20, a million dollars that's like a million dollars in pennsylvania currently <laughs> 20 packs of cigarettes in prison <laughs> that's right, right. I, sh I should have thought it was either that or like little snowball candies uh whatever the <laughs> currency and currency in prison is yeah ramen noodles right <laughs> <laughs> so how's it play um there's a break in the back of the neck uh that was poorly mm. repaired and so i have yet to bring the strings up. I need to get it. I was just talking to someone, uh, JCR Guitar Repair in Dover, PA, um, and I was just talking to him before the virus hit, 
and I'm going to have him repair the neck so that I feel comfortable enough to, you know, yeah. string right. it back up. All these guitars, you know, whenever I show them off, strings are limp because unless I'm truly doing a set performance with them where I have to make sure everything's right, I'm just trying to keep them as historically accurate mm -hmm. and don't want to damage them. Um, so the prison guitar, I have an idea for the prison guitar. Um, once I get it fixed, I want to have a show called the prison guitar and the guitar. You, you see the stage opens and there's a spotlight in this guitar. That guitar there is sitting right in the center of the stage. And then one by one, different musicians come up and perform prison songs on it. <laughs> and it could be done for prison reform or it could be done for a, a, a church group or whatever. But how cool would it be to have different musicians performing old prison songs on a guitar that was illegally made in a prison? Hmm. Now, is that prison still around? Wouldn't it be great to take the, I, you know how BB King and those guys used to, yep. to play at the, the prisons? That'd be great to go back and. I'm, I, I, I'm not sure if Huntington is still around or not. It, it, they called it the wall. It was massive, massive and imposing. Uh, I think it may have shut down. I'm not sure. But that yeah. would be so cool. Two things real quick. I'm not sure we gave if we did or I might have missed it, but Bill Nolan Jr. was the one that, that answered the question. Yes, he did. 20, <laughs> 20 packs of cigarettes. And then uh Sean Zimmerman uh, was asking for a reminder of what the name of the bar is where the where name going. of the bar, Spiel's yeah. Tavern, S-P-E-A-L apostrophe S, Spiel's Tavern in New Alexandria, Pennsylvania. Um, I've got information at shanespiel.com. Um, nice. okay, cool. of course it's closed right now. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, once the governor gets his head out of his rear end then we can open it back up and, and, uh, have some more blues in there. <laughs> nice. So, uh, where should we go? Uh, more, yeah, now, more to share. Right, go ahead, Pat. I just had a question for Shane. If any of the watch parties you've started, you can see questions or traffic in there that maybe we don't see. Obviously, feel free to. Uh, yeah, I see. I've clicked can. out of them in okay. order to save. That's fine. Internet juice. <laughs> okay. All right. No problem. So back um, to show and tell. <laughs> all right. Um, here's a cool one. Now, see you. Uh, now, Beard, I was talking to you before all this, and you said about how now that you have this show, sometimes uh, companies will send you. Uh, a piece of gear or give it, you know, give it to you at a discount because they believe in what you're doing with this show. Um, I have people that will send me instruments because they know I'll feature them, you know, in videos or even play them in concert. And so I had this one sitting here made by a guy named Jack Bauer. And uh, <laughs> this is wild because this is a banjo and the head of the banjo is an old Mountain Dew bottle. Nice. And he cut the bottle, and he figured this is the exact amount of room he could make after shrinking the bottle with a heat gun and putting it on there and tightening it up. And it's tight. It's it's in there with just carpet tacks. Um, it's got a dulcimer type of uh, fretboard, and the thing is just... Wild is that? That's, That's great. great. I mean, you know, an old Mountain Dew bottle. That's insane. Okay, That's, we'll go from that. It's not bad in the fiftieth, uh, what fiftieth anniversary of Earth Day today, right? So we're recycling bottles for. <laughs> there we go. Um, we'll go from that to the exact opposite. And I was doing a show two years ago. It was in downtown New York for the uh, Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Festival. And that night we had a bar gig. And one of the guys came in from Michigan. Drove the whole way from Michigan 
to come to our little festival we have here in New York, Pennsylvania. And he met me out on the sidewalk as I was about to walk into my gig. And he said, I made you something. And uh, <sighs> oh, wow, let me nice and big. There. Look at this. That is amazing. This <laughs> is a five string. The, the whole body is hollow body done with quilted maple. My name is in, inlaid in there with ebony dust. If you notice, it has the uh, um, the fan frets. It, the guy just went on every experimental idea and put him into one guitar. The three pickups are mini humbuckers. They are my favorite pickups. In fact, these pickups are sold by CBGiddy.com, and they named them Snake Oil Pickups after my band, Shane Spiel's Snake Oil Band. And it's just... This is the Maserati of cigar box <laughs> guitars. I, I mean, we're talking locking tuners. Look neck. Yes, look at the neck. Look oh at this. Gosh. I mean, this is just fantastic. And the, the strap came with it, and the, the maroon diamond in the strap matches the diamond in the crown on, on the inlay just it's it's insane yeah that's something bo diddley or uh, billy gibbons would be proud to own <laughs> exactly but it's five string because i'm used to not playing six strings i i have a whole basement of six strings and uh been playing them forever but i'm so used to playing in instruments with three four and five strings um that even in a lot of my six strings i take the low e off do the keith richards type of open g Except I don't play like Keith Richards. I have my own style that, you know, with the open G, just I, I live there. You know, but to have this with five strings open G, the action is, oh my God, that action is so perfect. Um, so it's it's weird because my band plays all, you know, junk, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and then every once in a while, I just got to pull this out and play it just because it's it's so fantastic. He said he spent 120 hours mm. on this. I can believe it. So, so go ahead. Yeah, you know, I was going to say Sean Zimmerman had a series of questions about that. Go ahead, Jason. Oh, we, that and just so people know, when you say your band, like your bass player, somebody mentioned, or I think Brian Landreth mentioned earlier, we're getting back to the wash tub stuff, and your yeah. bass player plays the the wash tub. We the electric wash tub. We electrified his wash tub. It's still nothing but a stick and a wash tub. Actually, no, 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 no. Hold on. The new version. Now he's been through six wash tubs since the band started because he likes to get drunk in concert and beat on them. You know, he takes a stick off and starts beating on them and, and everything. Well, last year in December, we were playing at Liquid Hero Brewery in uh, in downtown York, Pennsylvania, and they just finished off a bourbon barreled uh, Russian Imperial Stout. <laughs> they cut the barrel in half, and that is now his new base. Nice. Is a whiskey barrel that aged beer, and now he's using that, but it's still electrified. What we did was... Uh, and I show it in the book um, when he uses weed whacker string for his one string. And uh, it goes down to an eye hook that is in the wash tub. We electrified, we put piezo pickups on that eye hook and ran that into a preamp. And that gives you string bass response without feedback. So we've done big shows, we've done chameleon club gigs, we've done festival gigs, and there's no feedback. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. That's Sean great. wanted to know, is there ebony binding on the back? It is purple heart binding okay. on yeah. the back. It's <laughs> binding up the side, though. If you look at the front, uh, isn't the neck, is the neck uh, down? The, the binding actually, uh, you know, oh, the side binding, yeah. That, that may be ebony. 
There's so many details on this thing. I mean, look at these tuners. The tuners have inlays. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I mean, just just fantastic. That's great. yeah. That, that purple heart is like really rigid. Uh, Cr Alsip guitars down in uh, the Atlanta area uses that, and they're like, you you put that in the neck, and that neck is never going to move. Ever. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I have a, uh, a cigar box mandolin made by Harry Harn down in uh, Frederick, Maryland. He he builds under the name Crockbite Guitars, and the neck of that is just a big hunk of purple heart. <laughs> I mean, that's not going anywhere. I could win a bar fight with it. <laughs> uh, here's one more. This uh, this was the inspiration for most of the songs on my last album, Stay Primal. Uh, this was made by a guy named G.S. Monroe down in Florida. And this is like a 100-year-old box, another one that used to hold 100 cigars. And he is just a one of the best folk art luthiers um i've ever seen his stuff just it sings now this one um it's got that beautiful cedar and i keep a lighter gauge string on this great player you can mm -hmm. tell how much i've played it yeah it's gonna be trigger here pretty soon if you're not yeah, careful pretty much <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i mean you know let's talk gear let's talk collecting playing gear um i've always been one that i never wanted to sound like anyone else um simply because if i tried I'd, I'd sound like a poor version. You know, I went through the Hendrix phase when I was young, you know, and I had a, had a Strat and I wanted to, and it's awesome, but there was already a Jimi Hendrix. And I think once I stumbled onto the cigar box guitar idea, uh, I discovered this is who I sound like. And so I collect all these different guitars. I play so many in concert. I mean, it's, it's nothing for me to have, seven guitars on stage for a tiny barroom gig uh, because I'm always swapping them out, different tunings, different strings. Um, but they gave me my personality. I have a question about that. So obviously there's a lot of influences in that realm that I wouldn't be familiar with, right? You can kind of feel the genre. Do you ever take maybe one of those other songs, like a Hendrix song or something else, and interpret it through these instruments? Do you ever... <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> half, <laughs> half of our set is unexpected covers. Nice. Now, we're a jug band, so we have cigar box guitar, harmonica, wash tub bass, and my percussionist plays a cajon. <laughs> and except in concert, we say that it's his grandmother's dresser drawer, you know, and He'll, he'll reach in the back and pull out a teddy and throw it at the audience. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we like to, I mean, we'll do old Robert Johnson or Muddy Waters. We'll do Rolling and Tumbling. We'll do, you know, a few of those. But then... Um, We'll do dancing days. We do. It's great. Um, uh, I don't live today. Um, uh, I'm so lonesome I could cry. Uh, we'll we'll just take it from anywhere. We do a version of um, of personal Jesus, <laughs> but we do it to a John Lee Hooker boogie. So we get the whole John Lee Hooker boogie going. And the whole audience gets into that. And once they're into this boogie and they don't know what we're going to do, 
Then all of a sudden we hear boom, 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 reach out and touch faith. And they just go nuts. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I grew up on thrash metal. I grew up. Of course you did. You know, of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it your shirt. Until, it wasn't until college in the you know late 80s, early 90s that I discovered blues. Um, because before that, it was all Megadeth and Venom and Slayer and the faster, the better. Um, and then I discovered the blues, went down that rabbit hole, kept going back in time, and then finally hit the cigar box guitar and said, oh, okay, okay I'm home. But, you know, there's certain songs that we do that I'll throw in um, Ace of Spades in the middle of it. We also do that a lot. You know, because I remember in, in college, I used to hang out with the Deadheads. I re never really got into the Grateful Dead that much, but I would sit there in their dorm rooms and listen. And I always thought it was interesting that the Dead always threw little snippets of other songs during solos. And I love the idea. It's almost like a mashup. And so we do that now in the band. Um, first of all, we never have a set list. Shane Spiel's Snake Oil Band never has a set list. We just show up and go. And I drive the Cadillac and the band goes on for the ride. Um, but in the middle of songs, uh, if I hear in my mind another song, I'll go into it. And we've gone into way crazy jams in the past. Uh, and that's, that's what keeps it exciting for the fans because they never know what's going to come at them next. Just staying on that topic, would you ever take a cigar box and modify it to make it pointy like a dime bag Daryl or something like that? Just no, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe I make mean, a flying... Make, J Jason could finally get that flying V he wants. It. We'll send you some cigar boxes and let you wow. magic. Well, this is what I'm working on right now. Now, this is not cigar box. I forgot to pull this one out. I also like building kits. I get those cheap Chinese kits off of eBay. And that's what I do on the side. That's my little hobby. Here's what I'm working on right now. Here's my mini. It's a Steinberger okay. type of guitar, you know, cheap Chinese. But I gave it a, a weathered um, dark wood look and put these brass pickups in there from cbgiddy.com. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll trust me. There's no rules whenever it comes to <laughs> what I'm playing or making. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Let's talk. I mean, I'm watching the time a little bit here. We're about 47 minutes. Um, and there are some things that I think we need to get to. Let's talk slides because, you know, there, 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 I, there's a lot of people watching right now, which is yeah. awesome. Uh, maybe you're watching because for the stories and stuff like that. But a lot of us play slide, even if we don't ever pick up a cigar, cigar box, right? Right. So you have, you, I have some slides that you would probably recommend and I think even sell, right? Yeah, I actually have. And I have a, my own site is called stubby slide.com. And uh, it started with me searching for the right short slide for cigar box guitar. Because if you get say like a regular slide that goes on your finger like this, you know, medicine bottle slide, um, let me grab this guitar right here. This is one of the guitars from the book. And uh, if you try to play with a long slide on your finger, in fact, let me get a different one just so you can see because the clear one doesn't come through on the thing. If you get a regular long slide, it gets clunky on three strings. And I, cr I created this technique of playing where I have to have a slide on the upper part of my finger. If you've ever seen ring slides where you're supposed to go down here and you're supposed to fret and still slide, no. I need one at the tip of my finger like this. So this is the Shane Spiel King slide at Stubby Slide, and it's a nice heavy mass slide. You put a little bit of felt. It comes with a piece of felt, so you fit it to your finger, and it's just right there at the top, and that allows me to not just play three strings across. but I can play the strings in between. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, all sloppy, but that gives you the idea. The the slide becomes a metal fingertip, right? And well, like play that middle string without yep. playing one. So you're still getting kind of sliding around. That's a cool technique. That's neat. So I started it with that, and then I've added slides ever since. Now, right now, that I actually took the website down for two months because I'm a one man operation here. Um, I needed to concentrate on getting uh, Poor Man's Guide magazine out and packing orders and everything else was getting to be too much. So I had stopped Stubby Slide for a bit. Now it's back up and I'm getting a lot of the slides back. Uh, one of the ones that's coming real soon is the medicine oil. It's a snake oil slide and there's two different sizes. This is one. It's the classic chorus Eden style mm -hmm. and let me see i just got yeah there we go it's just the lighting is tough but it's got the old um snake oil uh, label on the inside that you can take out but these are actually sold at the delta blues museum in jackson mississippi um they carry my slides there and so those are coming soon and a lot of different stuff. I even, um, it's shown in issue one of Poor Man's Guide. I discovered the, that old World War I and World War II headphones, if you open them up, there are little humbuckers inside. <laughs> they, had the te they had the technology as early as 1911 to electrify a guitar and so i have gotten some of these these are for sale i have a few of these left and i even show it they come with a copy of this issue where i show how to turn this into a pickup um but the idea of stubby slide is just weird and curious stuff you can't find anywhere else and i'm slowly adding more and more to it Nice. We got a uh, pocket pocket cigar box guitar jumping in here too, and then I Jason, got, I was hoping you, I was hoping you got up to get that, Jason. Yeah, that's right. Sweet. So, um, I was a science teacher, right? Okay. So in the back of my classroom, there's a there's a like kind of a lab prep stuff, and there's some old stuff back there from from years gone by, and there is a kit back there, a slide making kit. Now it's a kit to make slides that you would look at under a microscope because right. it's a biology classroom. But in that kit, I found this, and I thought you'd appreciate this. So this says, it's a Hanover. It's from Staub's Drugstore in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a prescription that was that was uh, dated 11-30-59. Nice. Right? The, the phone number for it is 71... 229. I can say it out loud if you want to call it. You can. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a five digit number. I love right. it. Right. And it was it was written to a former teacher in the school district that was, I, I believe, passed away before I was ever hired there. Um, it, or long retired anyway. Um, it's a prescription that was written to his wife. So that bottle was sitting. And I, I would say that's pretty much a vintage Corzina bottle, right? Yeah, that's beautiful. That's so, beautiful. Um, it's very cool. And so, anyway, share that with you. I actually, I, I wish I could show it um, because it's right above my my computer here on the second shelf. But I got this stand for sewing machine thread bobbins, and there's uh, there's like forty mm -hmm. in a row for it, and that's filled with guitar slides in my collection. And uh, I mean, I have everything from certain sockets that I've used in concert to bone slides, um, bottlenecks, uh, you name it. And then, you know, other weird thing, of course I have an Ebo. Ebo. You got to have an Ebo. Um, <laughs> but just so many different slides. And I just, that's one of the things that I like to collect. Oh, here's a cool one. Uh, a guy named Dave Linus made this for me. It actually has, let me see. Uh, where is it? My picture's on it. <laughs> there we go. No, oh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, that's just another slide I can just put right on my finger and go. 
Since I'm like a fish out of water today, this is my contribution to the show. <laughs> oh, there we go. Nice. I wish they would. Here's what I want somebody to do with an Evo. I want them to take the battery compartment and I want them to put it on a wristband. Oh, yeah. Here with the yeah. wire going to just a small part for you to play the guitar. Yep. Because this is too big. Now, I know there's a new one that's out that's a little smaller. But all they have to do is get rid of that battery compartment and put it on a wristband, and it would just be so much of a better piece. Don't you yeah. think so? Yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, I saw him through Phil Keggy, and he had the original ones that didn't even have the on and off switch. Oh, and it was the silver well, he, ones. And... Did you ever see the one? It, uh, it was like this big. It looked like a TV remote that he used oh, to use. Let me see that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me see. Uh, oh, Bill so, Nolan Jr. said cut down test tubes. For right. your chemistry set for a slide. It's funny because I've been looking around that science lab for years for something that would work as a slide because I have a guitar there and I'd be like, oh, let me show the kids, but I could never find it. And then I just one day stumbled upon this. <laughs> Beautiful. Quint Quentin James said, slide, your action needs to be a little high. You play directly over the metal fret. And he's right. But Quentin, yesterday, right. um, this hour, we had um, Bosco France and he spent some time talking about how you actually can play with the slide behind the fret and press down so you're fretting and then roll over the fret so it's a oh, Sonny Landreth. Yeah. 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 Right, right. So it's it's a uh, interesting and he kind of demoed like playing over the fret with a slide and then backing off and pressing down with a slide and how those different sounds and rolling over sound. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. It's that's a very advanced technique and one that I really don't use myself because I learned to play slide listening to Muddy Waters and basically he slashed at it like Jason in a horror movie. And that's what I liked about him and Hound Dog Taylor. Um, you know, there's beautiful slide. Out. I, I can listen to Derek Trucks all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I, I remember seeing him in concert when he was 17. Um, and, uh, but that's not me. I, I just need to slash at the strings and, and grind it and everything else. So, yeah, my action's high. And I actually have my own set of signature guitar strings. Two different versions. There's a cigar box three string um, signature set, and then a six string set. And both of those, the gauges are heavier than normal. In fact, they both have wound G strings in there, just like the old black diamond strings we used to have. Uh, instead of the plain G, it has a wound G because I found playing slide, uh, man, that wound G will just grind on forever. So those are at cbgiddy.com. I just have to put a shout out to them. So we are we're closing in on the hour here. Wow, uh, that was fast. Yeah, Crazy. tell me about it. But um, well, we would a uh, couple things that I'd like to have happen in the future. One is we've been talking since we started this channel about coming down to see you or something like that and getting the you know getting into some of the stuff a little bit more. So hopefully, maybe after our period of social distancing is over, we can do something like that. Now, see, the audience doesn't know this, but we just found out we all live like 20 minutes away from each other. <laughs> yep. True story. So what's really – one of the last things that I'd like to point out, too, because I've been following Shane for a while on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. And so what has always really impressed me is you have a guy here – that has this passion for cigar box guitar has created this community around it. He is writing a book, selling magazines, you know, selling slides, you know, you've pretty, I mean, this is kind of your thing, right? I mean, yeah. it's not like you're working nine to five at a lawyer's office or, you know, something on the side. You've yeah, been doing 10 years, ago, time. 10 years ago, I lost my job and I fell back to this and I've been doing this ever since. So, and you write, you write for, do you write for some magazines too? I've written for, yeah, I write for Guitar World magazine um, as well as my own. Um, and I have a standing open um, invitation to write for Guitar World at any point. Uh, one of those things that they're like, yeah, if it goes into print, though, it's not like a paid thing. So <laughs> there's only so much I can send to Guitar World. But I, used to, I have a ton of articles on guitarworld.com and, uh, you know, stuff that I'm now the same type of articles I'm now going with my own magazine, um, forgotten legends, forgotten instruments, um, stuff you may have heard in passing in an old blues interview, but nobody ever took the time to look into. 
So I'm that guy. I look into it. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, I, I mean, I love that stuff. So, uh, I mean, I think, I think basically what we're talking about is some great advice right here, right? From making poor man. Absolutely. Guitar. The signed copies. I do have signed copies at poor man's That, that sign. Where am I at here? Camera wise. Oh my God. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard, right? There you go. I can't get it. It's I can't see my camera. And anyway, <laughs> you have to take my word for it. Right here, it says it would have been great. It says make your own legend, build your own legend. I feel like you know Shane Spiel is definitely building his own legend. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Get the book. Uh, Put Mike it on Adams. The table. Put it in your bathroom. <laughs> it's, Put your oh, phone yeah. down because it's just that big old fecal material on your phone. <laughs> I, I wanted that book to be just as interesting in the bathroom as the wood shop. Um, Mike Adams asked, where did I go to college and what did I major? I, uh, I never finished college. <laughs> I was going for marketing and such, but, uh, no, I dropped out. I basically taught myself all this stuff and, uh, life, life is, um, a class. And so, you know, I've never stopped learning. Right on. So, uh, Pat, you have any more questions for Shane? Oh for man. My head's going to explode, right? Because this is, I'm a fish out of water in this whole thing, right? I, I'm not even bold enough to play slime. This has been an amazing hour for me. I, I, I never thought that like such primitive instruments could elevate you in a certain way. Like every little ditty that you played, the two clips we watched, like it's just fantastic. Like I'm just really moved by it. It's pretty wild. I, oh, I wow. Just never, Thank you just never really thought that you know and and i and i also learned today that your collecting is way more altruistic than our collecting right <laughs> you're, you're collecting for a much higher purpose than we are and so now that i've given all the lofty elevated things i want to drag the show down and i want to give you this one for free right in the in the in the light of the quarantine and you talked about how you just totally fabricated the name of your company yeah. you know you might want to go with shane exotic King of the box, <laughs> you know. Maybe. Well, I'll tell you that Carol Baskin, that son of a <laughs> bitch. <I'm> gonna... <laughs> now, unfortunately, I have to like have a murder for hire thing, and we don't want to go on. that far. I have thought just... I need to cover here, Kitty Kitty. Oh, I need could. to cover that song, man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Capitalize on this quarantine time, right? That's why that thing went nuts because we all had nothing to do, and we went down that horrible Ooh. path. We should go down some much more, uh, much more elevating <laughs> thought patterns, but. No, I just wanted to like thank you for thank Jason for putting this together, and uh, it was fantastic today, and uh, lots of great comments and some new faces in the in the chat, and look forward to actually like meeting you in person once, like you said. Uh, you guys have an outside. open invitation to come down Route seventy four and come see me anytime. Right. Sweet, yeah, that's that's been awesome. Uh, make sure you look in the description for the video if you're on if you're on YouTube in the description for the video, uh, and I think even on Facebook in the description. There's a link to Shane's website. There's a link to his YouTube page. There's a link to his Instagram page. And from those places, you can find everything else he's doing. Uh, but make sure you go down and subscribe to those. We'd love for you to subscribe to our channel, too. If, uh, I mean, we don't cover cigar boxes. No, but that I mean, to, my fans, to my fans, subscribe to this stuff because this is guitar nerd gear heaven. <laughs> yeah. Serious. And we're at... Amazingly, in you know, this little journey we've been taking, we're at I just look, we're at 996 subscribers. I know Brian Landeth was giving some shout outs earlier, and we appreciate his help, all his help throughout the last year. Four so. subscribers on YouTube. We need four more. Yeah. <laughs> this just turned into a telethon. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going on the air until we get a thousand. You pick up your phones. I'm uh, seeing Dick Frederick. I'm seeing names I'm not familiar with. Come on, it's just four more. We're gonna get some kid, <laughs> gonna get some kid a pair of shoes. <laughs> But anyway, we've never done that. We don't, we don't. Oh, that's uh, horrible. We don't horror. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, you know, if, if you're around and you want to, that's great. Um, get out there and check out what Jane's doing. It's cool stuff. Yeah. There's a cool yeah. community, man. It's a, it's a community of guys that share tips. Uh, it's the same thing we've been talking about in the pedal word world with the pedal manufacturers we've talked to. You got all these guys that are building cigar box guitars. I was in a chat, uh, Ben Combs. It's either Ben Combs or, um, yeah, I think it was Ben Combs' chat. He had a cigar box guitar on a couple months ago. And the guy that built that guitar for him was in the chat. And I was just like, oh, well, you right. must have Jane Spiel. And he's like, oh, of course I know. And, and this was at their Canada. They were from Canada. It was a Canadian builder, uh, probably around the Ontario area somewhere. I'm like, we know Shane Spiel. He's like, oh, absolutely no Shane Spiel. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, check that out and learn from them. And you know, if you're bored, 
Build oh. one. Yeah, build one. If you're bored. See, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't no, do it. Let's hear it. Let's Use hear the it. other slide. Use the magical slide. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't when nobody's watching. Yeah, you had Bosco France on yesterday and Shane Spiel. I, I would never pick up a slide after that. <laughs> oh, come on. Now you take an old broom wire. You nail it to the side of your wall. Put a couple Coke bottles to pull it out. You get a third Coke bottle. You got yourself a diddly bow. That's how they taught themselves how to play slide back in the day. Mm -hmm. Do that on your garage. You'll be fine. Just don't tell your wife. It's <laughs> hours of fun. <laughs> in the hours right. of fun. All right, I think that's about it for today. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Um, yeah, thank you for coming on. It's been a blast. It's been nice to know you a little better. Awesome. All right. So with that, everyone. Yeah, man. So uh, I think the rest of the week you might be stuck with Jason and I unless we pull a rabbit out of the hat. We kind of front loaded this week with some great guests and had some other irons in the fire. But you know, stay tuned. We'll still be broadcasting and finding something to help you occupy time with. But this has been absolutely fantastic today. And with that, I'm PJ on behalf of the Beard reminding you, no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear.